What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and I want to thank you all for your support in leaving likes and comments, and, and most importantly, hitting that red subscribe button right down below the video. These videos are uh, obviously persona non grata on YouTube, but I think the topic is super important, um, and I'm hoping that you'll subscribe. I've earned your subscription today, and then you'll go watch a video that actually has ads. Um, this one is a bizarre defense, and... Um, I had a feeling we would get here, but um, I'm, I was hoping we wouldn't. Um, in a brand new defense for the much maligned Netflix documentary, the director has referred to the film as feminist. Now, I don't know uh, exactly if it's lost in translation, uh, the uh, uh, definition of that word. But uh, as with all uh, videos on this topic, I know they're going to be no-nos for YouTube. So I'll run an ad just quick for my stuff. It's me. I'm the sponsor. And all I want to do is remind you that I have a thriving Discord community I'd like you to join. I have a strong presence on Twitter Alternative Parlor. You can find me on Twitter and you can join my subreddit. I'd love to see you on all four platforms. Links are in the description of this video. Aye, 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 aye. You can also support the channel by clicking that join button down below, becoming a member here on YouTube, or signing up at my subscribe star, which is also linked in the description below. Both forms of support go miles to support people like my wonderful editor, Sean. or my wonderful thumbnail creator, Ben. You don't have to do these things or join these communities, but it would be neat if you did. Now let's get on with the video. Hey, thanks for enduring that. I, I do wanna grow my Discord community and my subreddit and my parlor and my Twitter. Um, just the more places I can be that you want me to be, uh, I'll be there because uh, you are the most important part of this channel, of course. Uh, so the director of this film, uh, Maimona DeCure, uh, has now said that it is, in fact, a feminist um, triumph film. I don't know what part of feminism is... Uh, Zooming in on uh, the uh, um, the parts of uh, young kids dancing around, having you know panning and having. The point is, you could have made this movie without actually doing the thing that you thought you were going to speak out against. Uh, having ultra zoomed in uh, on on a kid in uh, like booty shorts. Uh, why is that Zoom? What is that Zoom for? Who's that for? Well, I showed you today in the first video who exactly that is for. As we know, the number one and number five trending topics on a particular hub-related website, if you know what I mean, uh, are related to this film. Who's looking for those scenes? Why are they looking on a site with spicy videos for this, video, this movie? Why do you think that is? Who do you think is looking for that? I mean, I think we all know. Smash like if you know who it is. But now the damage control is out big time. Nolte, director defends Netflix's film as feminist. She made the movie uh, during a panel at Toronto Film Festival because I saw so many things and so many issues around me lived by young folks. And I decided to make this film to sound an alarm to say we need to protect our kids. Yeah, we do. 600 audition tapes, something like that, 600, 650 audition tapes were, were poured through by this director and the casting producer. Where are all those tapes? Essentially, that's all digitally transmitted. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what you'd call them exactly. I won't go all the way to, uh, to what some people are saying, but they probably should be under wraps somewhere. Um, you know, where are those? Are they, you know, hypothetically, if I wanted to, I don't know, easily procure uh, videos of 600 people doing these things, you know, young kids doing these things, 
you know, maybe I would just say I'm doing a documentary. I don't know, hypothetically, right? She says, it's bold, it's feminist, she adds. But it's so important and necessary to create debate and try to find solutions. For me as an artist, for politicians and parents, it's a real issue. Well, yeah. I mean, these things are happening. Um, the, the idea is... Or, I mean, I think the premise is rooted in good intent. Um, I think that the premise is real. When you go on TikTok or you look at social media, uh, I don't know, like, what, you know, kids are looking at nowadays. I'm almost 40 years old. I have no idea. Like, TikTok is still, like, this weird thing to me that I don't even understand. Um, but when I see, like, these viral TikToks, like, these kids putting ash on their face and pretending to be you know, uh, victims and stuff like that. I think what kind of idiot would do this? And then I'm like, Oh, kids, kids do this stuff. And I, I believe wholeheartedly that there are kids that are looked at with a, a unfortunate gaze on uh, places like TikTok and that, but you could have made the movie without actually doing it. You didn't need all the hyper zoom ins. Um, you know, you could have easily made this video or this movie, uh, and not taking advantage of them. Our girls see that more women are spice, spicified on social media. The more she's successful, she said. And yeah, it's dangerous. I agree, but then why did you do it? So here's the article that says, the film is indefensible. You don't make a movie to sound an alarm uh, about something by doing that exact same thing. You don't make a movie to sound an alarm about, you know, let's say, uh, uh, you know, robbing people by actually robbing people. Um, in no moral sense does this film make sense. Nothing about this film has anything to do or does anything to make a, a creep feel ashamed of himself. Um, and that's true. The idea that this film has elements that are supposed to teach us a lesson, it doesn't. It, it, it does start a conversation if that's you know, what you were going for, but it doesn't teach us anything. It doesn't actually show negative effects of it. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't really line up that the things are bad, if you know what I mean. A talented director could have found all kinds of way to film these twerking scenes without making the scenes a feast for weirdos. She chose not to do that. That was her choice. Netflix chose to distribute the film and advertise it. That was a choice. Those of you are wondering what was next after all this madness, this is it. Hollywood and the media are openly coming for our kids. Drag Queen Story Hours, and now this, it never stops. Well, I won't be so alarmist. That's, you know, this is one film. Yes, there is a disturbing trend of these like weird, like um, even that Big Mouth show uh, is really on the borderline, I think, of creepy. Um, and I don't find this film as something that would uplift women in any imaginable way. Uh, I don't see why this film would be getting awards, uh, except for, of course, the people that awarded it are now locked up. I mean, you can look that up, which is always hilarious. Um, and the, the footage in and of itself is very questionable, but it's almost like when you think about the edits, you know, the director sitting in the edit, you know, choosing how to zoom in and pan over and, and like, you know, really create some, um, how do you say, uh, a, a nice buffet of video clips for weirdos. Those are all choices. Um, and choices that she could have done something differently. Imagine being that camera operator, like, oh, let's feel like, get right up in there. Let's get right up in there. There were a lot of shots like that, that were just like, why? You didn't need to do that. The fact that they were even dancing in that manner was gross enough. You didn't need to have, um, someone's top taken off. You didn't need to have all the like the touching and the, all this other stuff. You didn't need any of that. Um, and Netflix is taking a lot of backlash from this. And I don't see this as stunning and brave. I, th I see this as gross. Um, I won't go as far as 
some of my peers as demanding its removal. But I will always say that, you know, canceling Netflix for a month or two sends a pretty bold message as well. I think we're probably reaching the end of this. I got to be honest, I'm very surprised that kind of the fervor around this topic survived the weekend um, and led Netflix's stock lower yesterday, although today it seems to be making a bit of a comeback. I wonder who's buying all that stock today. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I don't I don't uh, see a lot of value in this film. It didn't teach a lesson. It was just a bad decision to make, a bad decision to edit, a bad decision to distribute by Netflix, and now it's costing them, as we saw earlier in the first video. So far in August, since the films or since the film's announcement, uh, cancellation rates have increased by eight hundred percent, eight times. Sorry, eight times higher since the film was released. It's an obvious cause and effect that I hope continues for the coming weeks and months. Cancel your, net, cancel, cancel your Netflix. Spend some time with your family. Find a new hobby. Go fishing. Build an RC car. Build a model. Pet your cat. Build something. Read a book. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.